when we're sick as people, we throw different types of body temperatures and our doctors will use those body temperatures to help diagnose us. Now we have it in cows where we can take body temperatures and then tell a producer based on the type of temperature she has. Welcome to the Dairy Podcast Show. I am your host, Joe McFadden. Joining me today is Kelly Jo Johnson from SmackTech. Kelly currently serves as Senior Dairy Management Advisor for SmackTech. Today's episode focuses on artificial intelligence and its preventative treatment capabilities from both a drug and lactation perspective. Kelly, welcome to the Dairy Podcast Show. Thank you for having me today. Kelly, do me a favor, you know, for those in our audience that might not know about you, uh, tell us a a little bit about your background. I was born and raised in York, Pennsylvania, and I still reside in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, We always joke that I was born in the barn because at 20 days old, there's pictures of me in a feed cart, and my mom went into labor when she was supposed to be milking. So I literally almost was born in a barn. Um, So... The passion for agriculture has been in my blood since I was literally born and um, went to college, had my degree in dairy science, and then I've worked in the dairy industry since I left college. So for the last 12 years between AI, when I ran um, a route truck for a, a company, and then nutrition, and then a little bit of pharmaceuticals before I came on board here at Smack Tech. Maximize profitability and herd health with early detection in animal health, reproduction, calving and feeding. The most advanced bolus technology and professional support from agricultural experts makes this possible. Smacks Tech, the health system that future-proofs your operation. Well, it sounds like you've had a lifetime in the dairy industry, and I also know that you are an alum at Virginia Tech, correct? That I am. Yeah, we both share that in common, so I guess we can both say go Hokies and get a lot of people asking what a Hokie is. Um, welcome. Um, and you know what? I want to share this story with you. I I just, this just happened to me a a few days ago, but I was able to participate in a, in a debate and the debate focused on the apocalypse. And I had to defend animal science as the sole surviving discipline of study. And I went head to head with a computer scientist that studied artificial intelligence. And this person argued that his discipline and artificial intelligence most likely caused the apocalypse. I hope you have a different and more favorable perspective. So I want to start with a few very simple questions. And one, the first one I want to ask you is, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is the machine is able to learn from experience. So it's able to adjust new to like inputs and perform like human-like tasks just by simply learning algorithms and patterns of our every day. The services offered by Smax Tech do not replace diagnosis from a veterinarian or veterinary care. Smax Tech does not assume any liability for the detection of diseases or the accuracy or interpretation of the measurement results obtained. Smax Tech excludes any liability that could arise in connection with the herd management. Okay, so let's just start. Tell me about some of these inputs that you would consider to be important inputs uh, when it comes to the creation of artificial artificial intelligence on, on farms. So I think on farms, we can look at it as especially, you know, like in my every day to day life is working with the system that Smack Tech has and that it learns by inputting of records. So accurate record taking is able to help artificial intelligence learn um, what you do for sick cows, what you do to prevent sick cows. Uh, So like super good record keeping, accurate record keeping, the movements of the cows. So when we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're usually talking about there's something monitoring that cow. So what's normal for her? Like is walking, her normal walking pattern, her body temperature, um, her rumination. So like everyday things that we've used to treat and diagnose sick cows for years. Now we have the technology for it to be used by AI to help us help the cows better. So 
So from experience in working with all these dairy producers, I'm talking in just like reference to the smack tech system at the current moment. So when we're sick as people, we throw different types of body temperatures and our doctors will use those body temperatures to help diagnose us. Now we have it in cows where we can take body temperatures and then tell a producer based on the type of temperature she has. So is it a short blip, a prolonged blip, a super high blip, um, one that goes up and down consistently? We can take the guesswork out of what does she have and with certain amount of confidence based on a percentage, we can tell the producer. Um, so we take the guesswork out of treatment and the system can learn by record keeping because it can you know, like if we tell it, hey, they vaccinated today, so we're going to have temp spikes. So it won't tell you she's sick. It will just, you know, erase it, understanding that it's an immune response. So it's able to take the guesswork out of, okay, she has a temperature. What could it be? It's able to take that and go, here's what it could be with the percent confidence and, you know, work with people to trust AI <laughs> versus, well, she's, she's fine. So um, that's why record keeping comes in handy because AI is constantly learning from what we input in our on-farm records. Okay. And, you know, there's a couple terms that you've used. And, you know, when you first started to introduce artificial intelligence, you talked about machines and, and what role they play here. And then I heard you use the word learning a couple times. And so this word that came in my mind was machine learning. Um, is, is this what we're talking about here? And, and what differentiates, you know, the terms artificial intelligence versus machine learning? So artificial intelligence is a machine learning so I think we just say AI and we, it's a blank term. It's a blanket term, but for AI to get better, it has to be able to learn almost every farm differently. Cause we know every farm operates differently. So that's why I say the machine's learning machine learning, um, because it has to learn Art, part of artificial intelligence is it learning that farm. Does it also learn? I mean, humans are going to make mistakes, right? And so when it comes to record keeping, I would assume that, you know, we're making mistakes along the way simultaneously. I mean, can sort of machine learning help us identify those mistakes and, um, you know, prevent them from happening in the future, perhaps? I think AI takes the guesswork out of human error. Um, it's very easy to send treatment teams in and say, hey, she's a pneumonia cow, but she actually is a mastitis cow. But because she had a temperature and didn't really have any hard quarters, uh, they treated her for pneumonia, which three days later she would break for mastitis. So AI helps take the human guesswork out of treatments. Do you, this is sort of a follow-up question. But do, do you have any sense when it comes to a particular action that's done on farm that's maybe more prone to mistakes um, that could really benefit from AI? So one of the things where we really utilize AI from our standpoint is kind of shifting treatments from proactive treatments to more prevention treatments. So especially with our system, we know we're able to identify things three to four days because our sensor is internal quicker than an external sensor. So what AI is able to do is speed that process up even more. So say you get an alert, she seems fine, but it's telling you she has a temp increase. So we know that that is something's inflamed in that cow. Something is causing her immune system to like want, want to be a little bit crazy. So what can we do to work with producers to help that cow before she actually gets sick? That is where we see the biggest change in cow treatment is instead of proactive, we're doing prevention type things with mm -hmm. producers. Okay. And you mentioned sensors, right? I guess you're going to need sensors if you're, if you're dealing with AI. And, and I recently read an article from Denmark that classified sensors as being at the cow, so on or, or in the cow, near the cow, could be like drones, camera systems, 
or from the cow looking at various products like milk. And so I guess walk me through where you think the sensor technology is right now and what are some of the values uh, of those different types of sensors? So I think everyone knows that there's the standard. We have the ear tag, collar, um, now we have cameras, and then the new the new kit on the block is these inner room and boluses. There's multiple companies that have come out with one in the last two to three years. So they each do the same thing, but they do it differently. Um, so like right now we're at the forefront. Ours is internal. We working with producers, it's so fun because we can really hone in on that prevention versus proactive treatments. Um, I think each sensor has its own thing and AI is going to be on the forefront of dairy, dairy industry technology as well. So uh, it's, it's interesting to see where we're at now and where it can be in like three to five years. So when you talk about a room and bolus, though, I mean, when I, when I think, what is the go-to function of a room and bolus? It, it could be room and pH or change in temperature, which I think you did say change in temperature. Uh, I believe that there's some activity that can also be evaluated with, with some of these room and boluses. And so what makes the room and bolus perhaps sort of inferior or superior to an alternative sensor technique, like, like a collar, for example, that could measure activity or, or rumination? So I like to think of it as everything we are diagnosed and treated off of from people to dogs, to any sort of pet to cows is temperature. So by having it internal and you can watch what her temperature is doing every five to 10 minutes, we take the guesswork out of, does she have a temperature? If you do it externally, because we know temperatures go up and down. So like if you're taking a rectal temperature for that a minute 30 that you take it, she might not have a temperature, but in 20 minutes she could spike it. It's just like us. When I was at the doctor's two weeks ago and they told me how high my temperature was, I was like, you scanned something over my head. I'm sure if it was that high, I would not be feeling the way I am. <laughs> so... That is the one thing that's a little bit different with internal is you get consistent readouts from the cow. So we know when the temp's up, we know when it's down. Um, external, you do have secondary characteristics that come into play. So like environmental things. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny about that doctor's comment because, you know, I just walked up three flights of stairs and the first thing they do is you, they take your heart rate. And I'm like, yeah, of course, it's really high because I just walked up a flight of stairs. And so that, that real-time measurement can, can go a long way for sure. You know, when it comes to boluses, again, back to what they can do, and what are some of the events that we want to monitor with a bolus or, or any sensor uh, at, at that cow level? What are some important key events that really help inform the dairy producer? We well, you know rumination is key, especially for those pre and post fresh cows. You know, getting them back to the bunk as quick as we can after they pop that calf out is going to hopefully alleviate a lot of those gateway diseases like milk fever, ketosis, metritis, because like getting them to get groceries into their body. So no matter what system it is, using rumination, uh, temperature, cow movement, so activity. So you can catch lame cows, cows in heat. Um, why isn't she moving as much as she was yesterday? So like those are the three main parameters that any sort of technology will monitor. Um, of course, I think temperature is just so important just because we know a lot of things are based off of temperature. Because... If it's high, she's fighting inflammation. So why does she have inflammation? What's causing her immune system to be heightened? If it's low, we know that something metabolic is going on and we can get to her a lot quicker than waiting for her just to go down with milk fever. So that's super important for dairy producers as well, especially in that pre and post fresh cows. So I was reading ahead of this interview, I was, I was reading about some of these sensors and, and, the, and what, how temperature monitoring in the room and could you know, look at various heat stress events and calving events. Uh, that's, that's obvious, but you know, there was some studies too looking at water intake and how they could actually monitor 
um, water intake in, in a herd, which I found pretty interesting. Um, you know, another question would be, okay, beyond temperature, beyond rumen pH, um, and, and, and I guess motility of the rumen, where do you see rumen bolus sensors going in the future? Like what, what more could be added? Oh, so many things. So we added water cycles to our product a year ago. So now we're kind of able to watch water intake decrease a good day before if they have like milk meters or milk weights in the parlor, we can see water decrease before the milk decreases. So there's a correlation between she drank less water today, she's not going to eat as much, she's not going to milk as much tomorrow. Um, I think there's so many things that you could do. Currently with our technology, we're focusing on more of bringing more AI. So we already have our feature that we released at World Dairy Expo, which is the AI mastitis. We have other ones that we also plan to release. So like for us with the rumen bolus is being able to use AI to bring more to the producer to take the guesswork out of treating cows. So, you know, one of the things though about rumen boluses themselves could be uh, potential disadvantages. And so, uh, where do you see the disadvantages of a rumen bolus as compared to an alternative sensor? And I guess, how is Smack Tech uh, trying to, uh, you know, perhaps address those disadvantages to enhance adoption? I think the only real disadvantage is you just can't reuse it. Like, if she goes down the road, her bolus is going to go with her. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only real disadvantage because every system you use is going to require maintenance. So collars have to be adjusted multiple times throughout the lactation, ear tags, but you know, ear tags fall out. Like it's no, nothing against like ear tags or collars. Like it's just a cow's body changes when she's in lactation versus calving. So we have to do adjustments. So I, we do the same thing. Like you have to insert the bolus is about the most labor intensive thing is locking cows up and putting boluses in. So that's about our maintenance, is just getting it in the cow. One thing I want to discuss is the development of AI and the approach that Smack Tech has used sort of in the past and in, and in the present. You know, a lot of this comes down to data collection, right? And so when, when a producer might acquire and use, you know, sensor technologies for the first time, obviously they have not yet put their data into the system. And my question is, how, how is data uh, sort of acquired? Um, how is data used sort of across farms for the benefit of an individual farmer, if, if that's the case? Um, the, the whole data acquisition and development of AI is sort of a black box to me. And, and what could you share, I guess, in terms of, of how data is used for the development of, of your technology? We've been collecting data since day one. So... It's not like we know this farm and this, I mean, we know where they're located, but what we kind of do is so like, we don't really care what's going on on farm personally with your like on-farm dairy management software. We are more concerned about she threw an alert. Was it a true alert? So did she get treatment off of it? So we just do a lot of building our data up like that. And that is how we ended up with True Advices. We felt comfortable enough to release our AI technologies because we have so many data points that are backing us up. Um, so it's like, I'm sure there is a whole behind the scenes black box thing that I am not familiar with because it's not on my pay grade. But we, we start pulling data from accounts on day one and we have like an internal thing where we can pull all of the numbers don't necessarily know what farm they're coming from. We don't want, like we protect our customers data that way, but we do create databases so we can start to, you know, create consistent notifications and pick up patterns and notifications to consistently start to develop additional AI features. So that's kind of how we got to where we're at is we've been collecting all this data that we felt comfortable as a company. It was, released to a few customers, they were all like, yes, this is hitting at home. So it's collecting data to get the patterns to release AI to make it smarter, to make the customers smarter. 
So, so one of the things that I think a lot about is validating different sensor technologies. And I do this from the methane perspective, but I think the same kind of question would apply to you. You know, sensor data itself can sometimes be quite noisy. And so which raises questions about validation and, and how your particular sensor, you know, how, what's the precision and accuracy of that, of that sensor technology versus, you know, a veterinarian, for example, and somebody that goes on farm that could that could sort of predict or, or monitor the progression of, of a disease, for example. And so what, what kind of like, um, what's the criteria or, or, or benchmarks that SMAC Tech sort of, you know, has established to ensure that the sensor data um, is providing that accuracy and, and, and precision that's demanded by dairy producers? We encourage vets to use the system. So we encourage vets to incorporate what we offer into their, their current vet work on the farm. So we will in, usually get in meetings and we say, hey, what are your current protocols for X, Y, and Z? And they'll be, so then we explain that, you know, the system's able to catch things quicker. So you might not necessarily know what is causing this temp spike, but what can we do to support her immune system here versus say she breaks with ketosis five days later? So we actually work hand in hand with vets to give them an additional tool to use the system because no system works unless we have backup from the vets because all it does is help them help their producers even more. Um, as far as accuracy, we know our data is accurate um, based off of everything that's in the bolus and patent that I <laughs> don't necessarily know what it is, but uh, you brought up the vet thing, and that is where we just we work with vets. Like we encourage vets to incorporate this into their current on farm protocols because it's just going to help them help their producers even more. You know, when it comes to to data, I get overwhelmed with data. Okay, now keep in mind that I I study data. Every day, <laughs> I collect data, <laughs> I process data, you name it. It's part of my everyday life. But a colleague of mine, Dr. Julio Giordano, just received a Farm of the Future Award from the USDA to integrate data across different software platforms. I mean, when, as we start to collect more data on farm and you have all these different softwares, I can, I can assume that it's going to be quite challenging for a dairy producer to, you know, manage the wide breadth of data they have at their disposal to make really informed decisions. I mean, has Smack Tech put a lot of thought into the future in terms of how you know their technology will, will play into this this challenge? We try to keep things very simple and easy to understand. Um, we integrate with all the dairy management software systems, which is huge, because then we can pull data and like it's kind of like. So working with a, a producer right now is so we're like pulling their on-farm management software data and then we're using the smack tech system to like piece together the puzzle of what the data is saying. And it's pretty cool because like there's a group of us advisory team and just being able to fill in the gaps because we know what the cows are telling us. So like we see the data we can pull cow graphs and we can see exactly what that cow is telling us. So it's just, I think it's a problem solver is what I like to say. But I think in general, um, our technology is here for the long run because it's able to work so nicely with the other information they're already getting, but it almost simplifies it. So like, okay, you're getting an uptick in fresh cow disorders. Well, we can go back and try to figure out what the cow was telling us when they started across the whole group. So mm -hmm. it just, it makes problem solving on farm so much easier. It's kind of like that missing puzzle piece is how I like to say it. It's not hard to understand our data, but it just really helps make sense of other on farm data. So it just simplifies things. You know, and I guess another question, you brought up multiple times how you know, sensors could start to predict a disease earlier before the onset of the actual disease. I mean, can you give me some examples for how early you could detect something? Um, and is that good enough? 
So coming from experience, um, had a producer call me up today and they're like, guess what? And I was like, what? And they're like, we found hardware disease. And this cow was recently just put on our system. She's going to calve in here. And they noticed she was off. And so they looked at her graph. And I mean, her, she's her data. So her baseline still trying to like get ready. But you could, they caught it because she just, when they were bolusing, she just looked off. And then the next day they went out and found her. And she had hardware disease. They gave her a magnet. And you could see an instant comeback in like all of her features. So I personally think we err on the side of caution saying like three to four days we can catch things Mm -hmm. earlier and farmers who are very proactive in preventative and supportive therapies will treat a cow and then, you know, we're sometimes going to have to use antibiotics, but you can see them rebound without having to go through an extensive course of antibiotics um, producers say that they've been able to change the type of antibiotics they use because the cow had supportive therapies so that they could go to one that doesn't have milk withhold versus a 10 day milk withhold one. So just seeing the trend shift from treating early and being able to shift how we treat the cows versus we wait until she's a down cow with milk fever. Then we got to bottle her baby her for three or four days well, now we can see it almost instantaneously if she's going to break with milk fever. So it's just a different way of thinking with using AI on the farms. When your goal is to help animals reach their full potential, health matters. Diamond V offers a fresh perspective on animal health, a perspective that supports gut health, strengthens immunity, and ultimately enhances performance. For those who choose to invest in keeping healthy animals healthy, feeding Diamond V makes a statement about another dimension of profit where margins are measured by confidence in your future. To get a fresh perspective, visit diamondv.com because animal health deserves a healthier approach. You know, I, I think I've heard you said a couple times where you're, you're, you're applying a bolus, obviously, to individual cows. I mean, t- give me some examples for farms that are adopting boluses uh, on their farm. You know, what is the degree of use within a particular herd or group? Um, are, you know, how do you use a bolus in a setting where you've got thousands of animals and are you putting a couple boluses in a pen or, or a certain production group, you know, just describe that for me. So some people start with only putting them in so many cows and then they, they notice they have a sick cow and they're mad because they didn't get an alert that she's sick. She didn't have a bolus. So, uh, across everything is usually every single cow gets a bolus because they see the value of supportive and preventative therapies versus waiting for her to have a positive CMT test. And then now she might need intramammary antibiotics where before could we have given her a different kind of let's control your inflammation versus waiting three days until she has, you know, a positive CMT. So I would say most of our herds, they are going in fresh half, like heifers that are going to calve. So three weeks before calving, and then the whole herd eventually ends up with a bolus. Okay. Um, you know, you, you mentioned mastitis, and I want to circle back on this true advice technology, which, you know, I did Google this before I got on here uh, to make sure that I was well informed. You know, it refers to mastitis cases and looking at detection rates and it claims here that mastitis detection rates around 90% and that more diseases will follow. You know, to describe me to, you know, you know just your average Joe here, um, tell me what, you know, the true advice technology is all about. I mean, what's it actually monitoring? I think one of the best ways to put it is I always tell people it's an internal Fitbit or internal Apple Watch. So every metric you would get on your Apple watch, the producer has at his hands for his cows. So the AI feature, we have learned what temp spikes are actually mastitis versus say pneumonia or a foot rot. And sometimes the cow has very few flakes. Like that's how sensitive it can be to catch her early case of mastitis. 
Um, you know, eventually, like, what are the other gateway diseases we have? So we have, like, melt fever, ketosis, metritis, pneumonia. So eventually, you know, our goal is to have AI for every sickness. But right now, we just released in October the AI, the true advice. And, you know, it's customers really like it because it's accurate and it helps their treatment teams be able to hone in on one disease versus here's a checklist and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And you're focusing a lot on disease, but I mean, what, what about other, other, you know, areas of interest? Like for instance, you know, fertility, um, understanding future milk yields, things like that. I mean, is smack tech putting a lot of focus on that or if not, are I guess what's your thoughts in terms of artificial intelligence and predicting all aspects of dairy production, not just disease uh, detection? Uh, so we always say it's the cherry on top. So we do a lot with fertility as well. Um, we're no different than any other type of monitoring system. We record a heat. We have a heat window, days since last service, um, cycle length. So we're, we already provide that. And then the other thing that we can provide due to temperature internally is calving alerts. So you get a notification and hopefully within 24 hours there's your calf on the ground. So we're able to already dabble into those two things that are a little bit different than just disease detection. Um, so we always say we're the, we monitor health and then your cherry on top is healthy calves on the ground, hopefully, and, you know, getting cows pregnant with estrus alerts. In terms of, you know, let's broaden our, questions here a bit and think more globally for a moment. I mean, where do you see, you know, artificial intelligence and dairy production really taking off? Because I only asked this question because moments before I got on to do this interview with you, I, I found a quote in a scientific paper that said that the U.S. will not be a leader in artificial intelligence on farms. And do you agree or disagree with that? I think artificial intelligence for the dairy industry is going to have to be monitored. I don't think we're going to be able to take it and replace people like we probably could in other places. Cause I think if you just look across the board where we have technology, so robots, milker, milking robots are still labor intensive. They just change what type of labor intensive automatic calf feeders, same exact thing. So like AI, it's going to be another tool that we're going to have to manage as people. So I would almost agree with that quote. I don't think we're going to be a forefront because we're always going to have to manage it. With regards to the conversation surrounding agriculture on, on a global scale, you, you most certainly have to, to think about sustainability. And so tell me how artificial intelligence you know, plays a role within a sustainability perspective. I think AI will help with sustainability for multiple reasons. And a lot of it, I think, has to per, like connect back to producers. So... Also part of my little background is my family owns and still bottles milk and we have like over a hundred stores and two times a year we go to like shows and put our foot forward for the general public. And the, a lot of times the general public, it talks to us about antibiotic use and I mean, BST used to be a huge topic and thankfully that one's gone out the door, but being able to connect with the general public over how we can use AI to have a healthier cow will make the industry more sustainable because it's just there are uh, keywords that will it connects with the audience a lot better. And AI can also help us kind of get away from more antibiotic use and kind of go more towards that like prevention supportive holistic kind of use. So kind of still have it when we need it. But, um, you know, we all take vitamin stacks in the morning. So being able just to connect again with the general public of we're able to use AI to give a cow a vitamin stack versus wait till she's sick and treat her with antibiotics. So I personally think the general public will connect with it more, creating a more sustainable industry. You know, one thing that I've read a lot about is artificial intelligence and virtual reality. And, and certainly humans themselves are thinking about living in a metaverse, but is it possible that cows will one day live in a virtual reality as well? I mean, I would never say anything's possible, so. 
Uh, you never know. <laughs> I tried to say that question with a straight face, but I couldn't. Uh, you know, in reality, I, mean, I just, I just think in reality, like we just don't always know what's going to happen. So, like, you could tell me that tomorrow, all of a sudden, it's going to be in this like vir- virtual reality, and I'd be like, "All right, yeah. bring it on." <laughs> Well, I only asked that question because there's actually been some studies looking at cows wearing goggles that had that would that had a pasture in the, in the viewer, right? And so cows would feel less stress and produce more milk by living in this virtual reality. So I guess anything is, is certainly possible. Another question I have is, you know, how can artificial intelligence really help one specific livestock production system over another? I think one example of of this is looking at feedlots. And, you know, a lot of people use our technology and research on feedlots. So I feel like being able to create and give feedlot producers a tool that's AI that we can decrease this amount of acidosis and like liver abscesses is huge. So I do see like AI playing a pretty big part in that as well, um, if I had to pick another industry. All right. Thank you, Kelly. On on that note, I do want to thank Kelly Jo Johnson from Smack Tech for joining me today on the Dairy Podcast Show. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. I encourage all of our listeners to share and listen to the Dairy Podcast Show. Thank you for joining us today and take care. This is Joe.